Hello, my name is Robert Hazard, and I'm going to be talking about piracy and how it affects the global arena. The three main topics I'm going to stick to in this discussion is what is piracy and how it has evolved, how does it affect everyone, and most importantly, what people, companies, and government agencies are doing to combat such piracy. So in order to be able to combat piracy, we need to know what piracy is. Piracy is the unauthorized use, copying, or distribution of software in a marketplace that is not dictated by the manufacturer. And uh, there are many copyright laws that are in effect to protect companies who manufacture this software, but it also protects the end user as well from unauthorized programs and infections, and that's what most people don't know about it. When I speak of a pirate, I mean an individual who is taking act in the part of piracy. I'm not talking about individuals such as Captain Jack Sparrow or any pirate that you would know in an ocean. How often is pirated software infected? This was actually a question proposed by the National University of Singapore, and so they uh, got, grabbed random pirated software from different origins within the world, and they were able to see that uh, roughly one in three softwares that was pirated inside the United States had some form of malware attached to it. Of course, this does seem like a large number at first, but when compared to China and Mexico, who have upwards of 80%, sometimes even up to 100%, it seems fairly low in a global standard. Uh, should the end user worry? Of course the end user should worry. It's very important that uh, we worry about all the vulnerabilities and infections that come with our systems and can come with pirated software. Uh, this malware and spyware that is attached to it can slow down our system and actually freeze system performance. Uh, it can actually cause annoying pop-ups and even worse it can take out personal information such as bank account numbers, social security numbers, and other types of information that can truly ruin someone's life if they decided they wanted to do that. So now that we know about piracy and the effects it has on the end user, we're going to speak about how it evolved over time. Just like the internet evolves, piracy has evolved. It originally started with people trading software hand-to-hand -hand physically. Uh, you would trade software with your neighbor down the street. You'd get a random thing uh, in the mail that says you get free software. You'd install it. That could be a form of piracy and actually can cause a lot of trouble for the manufacturer. Once dial-up connection became a popular thing in a common household commodity, we used bulleted board systems or services. Okay, These actual services allowed pirates to spread data and spread information much faster than they would physically trading. So what does piracy look like today now that we're off of dial-up connections and we're on basic uh, Ethernet connections? Uh, at the dawn of the new millennium, Napster was created. I believe it was Christmas in 1999 that it was released to the public. And this actually was a file sharing network, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network that hosted software that you could download at any time. Uh, it was shut down two years later because it did host software that was illegally obtained or was pirated. And because of that, it was shut down. Specific reason. That specific reason is the only reason it was shut down. And uh, shortly after, the Pirate's Bay was introduced online and has been up ever since. This uh, so uh, website actually stands in a legal gray area because it acts more as a roadmap instead of an actual hosting network where it holds the data. Legally speaking, I spoke about copyright laws and how they affect, uh, how they protect manufacturers. Uh, but most importantly, copyright infringement is a criminal penalty and actually holds criminal uh, charges behind it. Not only can you get a five-year sentence, but you can also get a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine per offense. If your neighbor decides to download the software you pirated ten times, that's a fifty-year sentence and a two point five million dollar fine. How does piracy affect the end user? Uh, what's most important to notice is that it affects the main user by affecting the manufacturer. Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, these three companies lose billions of dollars annually to pirates and hackers who decide to manipulate and reuse their software. And because of this loss in profits, you can uh, actually see manufacturers increase prices. It can also cause restrictions on the end user and cause nothing but trouble when it comes to uh, how the end user wants to use their software. So, as an end user, what should you and me do? Um, it's always important to make sure that your software is valid and it's authenticated properly. You can also check and see if your service technician is TAG certified. That's the Trustworthy Accountability Group. Uh, but most importantly, if you see any sites or individuals that you think are uh, pirating software, you can always contact the authorities and tell them. What's most important is that you have proof. If you don't have proof, then there is not much of the pudding. You understand the reference there. Uh, Unfortunately, law enforcement has so many things they have to do that if they decide to go after piracy, they would be able to go after no other crime. So now that we talked about what you and I as an end user can do, we're going to talk about what companies can do. They have five main ways that they actually verify their software, and the first one is through authentication. 
You'll notice this with your uh, iPhone's phone number authentication, email authentication, social security number sometimes can actually be authenticated. Uh, the second way is a product key or activation key. If you have a Windows computer, you can flip it over and you'll see that there is a product key sticker on the bottom which actually has your product key and that authenticates your Windows uh, software with Microsoft. Sometimes they have proprietary hardware, such as singular cables, readers, uh, printers, things of that nature, that will not allow uh, software to run without the hardware being attached to the system. Uh, a very common uh, fourth method is actually the phone home method. If you ever reset an iPhone, you will notice that the uh, iTunes software contacts the Apple servers at least three to four times while resetting an iPhone. And it's important to understand that this phone home method is very popular when it comes to resetting and setting up electronics new for the first time. When it comes to a forced network connection, you rarely ever notice this unless you work at Apple and you go in the back room or you work at a computer repair shop. Uh, having a forced network connection only allows a hardware system to work or a software system to work if it is constantly being connected to another network. In the Apple stores, you go to the back, you will see there is an actual device that needs to be connected to Apple servers or else it will not work. So we talked about companies and individuals, you and me, uh, what we're doing to combat piracy, but let's talk about what the government agencies are doing because, you know, government is a major component of our daily life. Uh, what's most important is they are tracking down the source of where this pirated software is being held. Okay, it's a lot easier to cut the bad at the source rather than try to kill the people who are uh, benefiting from it. That's what they do with drug dealers, so that's what they're doing with pirates. Uh, charging pirates with appropriate crimes actually acts as an incentive for individuals not to commit such crime. A $250,000 fine is very hefty, especially for an average Joe Schmo like myself or a college student. So it, that's a very big incentive not to do what we're, uh, not to do any piracy or to affect uh, companies and their uh, copyrighted software. But the most recent thing that I have noticed when it comes to government agencies is they're actually working now with internet service providers to specifically see where this data is being sent to and coming from. So what are some new ways that we can fight piracy? It's always important to fight new ways of piracy. Uh, innovations in technology are one of some of the greatest uh, fights against uh, piracy, as well as innovations in software. Uh, most importantly, we can change the format in which individuals purchase software. If there are not enough people buying the software, as in the marketplace, uh, we would actually lower the prices so that way more people are incentivized. Unfortunately, this isn't happening and actually manufacturers of such, pirated, of such software are going the opposite way in actually increasing costs, which at the end of the day is only going to drive their sales lower and lower. I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here. We're going to talk about the good parts of piracy. Piracy can circumvent government bans. There are places like Saudi Arabia that banned war games, and it's very important that we are able to actually fix that. Okay, And so uh, piracy actually allows these individuals in these countries to not have to worry about the government bans, and they can do as they wish. Uh, piracy also allows media software to uh, reach new places, uh, reach people that would never reach it before, and most importantly allows individuals with no money to access the software they would not be able to otherwise. And that again uh, increases the audience of individuals using the software. So will piracy ever end? To be honest, I personally don't see piracy ever ending. It is a very large game of whack-a-mole, and it's the largest one on the internet currently. Uh, Whereas there is a demand, there's always going to be a supply. That's one of the basic rules of economics. We learned that with the alcohol ban. We have learned that with many drug bans, that as you uh, slow down and decrease the supply, demand will ever more and more increase and increase over time. So it's important that we are able to find that happy medium where we uh, allow the demand and the supply to meet that common point in the middle. I want to thank everyone for uh, commenting on my uh, first attempt at this presentation. I did go ahead and redo it because the first presentation was a little over 19 minutes, double the length of the necessary presentation. I want to thank everyone that commented. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to it fast enough, so it will be a day late. But again, thank you for everyone. I want to thank them, and I can't wait to comment on everyone else's presentations. Here are the references. I have added uh, the links as well, uh, so that way when I post the PowerPoint file itself, you will be able to see uh, where and when you can get it. Uh, of course, just copy and paste and you should be fine.
Thank you and have a nice day.